I am back up in Iowa with JD, my brother, and Kevin. For Joker better Diggs. or worse, yeah, you're here. I'm, I think today is going to be a, a better scenario. Today is something I'm very excited about, and it is this 1973 Torino Sport Roof, which uh, is a car I've been after for a long, long time. I think we were having some beers about something. Yeah. You brought it up, and you're like, man, I sure would love this exact car. I was like, man, it just happens to be that I have that exact car and I don't drive it enough. It is a 73 and this is a one year only body style with a 72 tail and the like Starsky and Hutch style 73 and up front end. And that's because Ford got around the five mile an hour bumper requirement for the rear for 73. So they were able to put the big bumper on the front but keep their old stamping for the back which made a really kind of unique car and when I was 16, I almost traded my 72 Le Mans for a car really similar to this. And I didn't do it, and I've kind of been looking for one since. I bought this two years ago. Yeah, right after we got our new shop in the town we're in now. And I saw this sitting next to Phoenix's shop. And eventually I got a hold of the guy. He's like, yeah, I'd sell it. So we, we agreed to a price. He told me it was the fastest car on the planet Earth. And it was similar to this Concorde in reality of speed at the time. I did a little bit to, I put a Holly carburetor on it and turned the timing up a little bit to where it only pings a little when you start it. Last fall, it did develop a slight lifter tick occasionally. And I parked it here, met Dalton over the winter, and I was kind of on the fence of getting rid of it so that it all kind of works out. But I still get to see it around and it'll be in the hands of someone who's gonna put more time and effort into it. Should have ran one part. Ran one part. Ran one part. Oh. Long story short. <laughs> we know how that sentence goes. Yeah, we know that story. Now let's see what she's what she's doing. Because huh? I really have all I did is whenever we came out and looked at this before, all I did was just look at it and go, oh yeah, I would take that. I did come open the door uh, the window a month ago because it kind of smelled like pee. <laughs> Hopefully it's better. Urine smell is minimal. Okay, good. Excellent. It worked. <laughs> Delicious. Let me send you some electricity. Oh. Um, I was... That's not cranberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens? See what happens. Oh, there's a dome light. Yeah, I got dome light. We got rat poison. That's good. So, Lots of leaves. <laughs> it's a barn find. Hey, it's really nice you just make barn finds for people, you know? <laughs> I didn't bring my buckets of barn dust I use in every video. <laughs> <laughs> Got a red light coming on on the solenoid. <laughs> Check engine lights on. Yeah, <laughs> it's just glowing a little. <laughs> Not wrong. This is supposedly a circle track car, but I don't know. Uh, try that. There she goes. I had to pull the choke closed. Go for it. Go ahead. Rim blow? The what? No. So some Fords have what's called the rim blow. Really? Steering wheel. And the horn is in the rim and you squeeze it. I have not seen that. You before. blow the rim. I think you know this what I mean? Here. What? No. Dude, everything works except for the air conditioning. But I bet if you recharged it, it would work. It's got 99,000 miles on it. No, it's good. Oh, the radio is a little funky. You gotta smack it once in a while because it finds like interdimensional channels. <laughs> It's FM, AM, FM. You'll set it to a station and you'll be listening to it and all of a sudden it'll wander like four stations to some other <laughs> dimensions. Okay. I don't know. Mars or something. Yeah. yeah. It's got a tack. It's got a And it it's, works. It's a Grand Sport. It's loaded. Bucket seats, console. Oh my console God. Dip. You know how long I've been waiting for this? <laughs> oh my God. This is, this is immediately worth it for me just to see him smile around this car, this is the correct decision. This one's for all the hoarders out there that have like 15 cars in a shed that they're gonna get to someday. Sometimes the best thing to do with that car is to move it into someone else's hands because they have the time for it. Sometimes you gotta think about what's better for the car than yourself. This situation being a perfect example. God, it sounds great. Thank you. 
Push that down. And it shuts the other side? Yeah. Death shot. Oh, death shot's pretty far across. That's basically tight down, right? No. Just put some sawdust in it, it'll be fine. Close enough. Not my car. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. I gotta be good to this. Well, actually, uh, can I have about 500 of that bag? There's no more. <laughs> Buy these on fullbarngarage.com. Did you win Iowa leaves? Buy that right next to my bath water. Actually. <laughs> I was wondering why you were bottling that the other day. <laughs> so, as Kevin mentioned earlier, he said when it was getting hot, it was kind of making some lifter noise, right? Something just tapping in there. What I'm going to do is just put some Marvel mystery goop in here, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just in my thought is kind of like with heat, it might be the plunger or the lifter is gummed up with some sludge or something, and that's what's you know, keeping it from being able to pump up all the way. And so this stuff is pretty good uh, for actually cleaning out sludge. It's a little bit easier on components than like sea foam and stuff. So what we'll do is we'll dump this in there, let it run, and we'll drive it to, the, to uh, his shop, and then we'll change the oil in it and see what that does, you know. And will it do anything? Who knows? But it's worth a shot. So Dalton, you seem to be the Torino aficionado. Yes. Ironically, out of us too. I honestly don't know a ton about these cars. There's a police option. Uh -huh. This is not, but there is a police option for these cars. Yeah. Were these like highway? It'd be like cars? an interceptor. Yeah, and but there were four door Torinos too. So, I see that. you know, it would be a, it could be a like a mid sized police car. It was probably like an interceptor, and it would probably seventy three would have had the uh, four sixty, right? <laughs> now that it's clean, it won't make it home, and it'll be a video now. <laughs> Hooray! You're welcome. Content. This thing is loaded. This is probably instantaneously going to be the nicest car you own. As far as You're options. not wrong. You're not wrong. Well, Corvette. Whoa! We might need these. I'm those? guessing those are there for a reason. Is dude? Did you see this spare oh, tire? That is the original yeah, spare. Original it's a spare. wide oval. God help me if I have to drive on that. Uh, well, that's not going to happen. You've got the but, Hercules HP 4000s on here. Right okay, now, we have so 4000 health points of tread. Exactly. It's even got the jack. What? Look, look how good this. Look how good this uh, trunk floor is. It's got a mat. That's an option. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame this quarter got hit because other than that, this car's in really good shape. It's almost completely. Little rust, rust in the quarter. That stud welder. Doop, doop, doop. Pop that out. Well, and then. Then have Dad come over and say, Dad, put a quarter panel on the car for That's me. what I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll do the rest. But please just, you know, make this work. <laughs> Four and gas fillers, though. I mean, this one's pretty bad. That's real bad. When I drove it here the last mile, it was like pretty much running off the accelerator pump. And I was swerving <laughs> back and forth to try <laughs> to catch the, something up. Yeah. Made it. It's got a column lock. Oh. <laughs> and it works. Ignore the rat poison. Oh, look at it. Out. Oh. That's so, that's awesome. That is a bad ass car. The whole thing, it's just solid. You know, these are just really, this is when Ford made a damn good car. He shut the door, it's just like, thunk. It's, that's a car. <laughs> this is why it was hard to sell. I think I gotta adjust my mirror, you know. <laughs> Remote mirrors. What a car. Got heat. What? That's on heat, so it's on the floor. Oh. Dude. Mm, that sounds great. Yeah, we'll turn that off. What do we got for wipers, huh? Ooh. Oh no no no. Uh oh. Radio? Radio works great. Yeah. 
What's this? Nothing. Oh, this is the wiper knob. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Apparently we're burning a lot of gas. <laughs> uh, it's still running, but we got some kind of fuel issue going on. We'll have to check the filter. Yeah. We he's, might be able to make it back. He said the uh, it came with a new fuel tank. Uh-huh. Maybe there's a reason. Oh, yeah. Oh well, yeah, we uh, we got some problems. Problems, problems. Uh, the warranty's up. Well, it, <laughs> damn it! Driveway warranty gets me again. Yeah, we got a a little cutting out like fuel starvation issue sort of deal here. That's what it did when I parked it last year. Except for it did it like it ran great for months, and then a half mile from that shed, it's like I knew I was parking it. It was pissed off, and it started acting like it was out of gas. So, but we just put three gallons in it. Yeah, it's probably not out of gas. So maybe we check for a filter or check for, you said there's rubber hose ran front to back on yep. it. When I bought it, it had a problem with the rubber hose was kinked in a couple spots and it is hanging yeah, out. Yeah, there is, it's dangling, you can see it. So maybe it did it again. Yep, so let's check for that, get her up in the air and, let's you know. Take her, did it tick? It did not tick. Yeah. It sounded good, maybe the Marvel. Maybe the Marvel mystery. Maybe it sat long enough it like built Congealed. up. Congealed. Yeah, they tell it's been painted below the stripe. Yes. It's nice and shiny down here. Exclusive. Yeah. Weird though, usually it's not. I guess it is hot. It's a nine. It is a nine. Nice. And it's got a tag. I fit pretty well under here. Yeah, you fit pretty good. Uh, 275. 275. Yeah. It was pulled about 2400 RPM at 65. Yeah, she's open. Yeah. Nice. That's all right. Got the glass bags. It's air shocks? They are. It's got air shocks, man. Jack this baby up. Those are uh, hijackers. Yeah. It's leaning against the exhaust here. Maybe they don't work so good. Maybe that's why the shocks fine. We'll put this back up here. There's a new, new sender sending unit. With red RTV on it that doesn't work. Yeah, you, you can't, wonder why. Can't do that. Brake line's been spliced together. Yeah. That's good. Wow, well, you're in Iowa. Yeah. It. Oh, it's been spliced. Oh no, it's been spliced together here and then replaced entirely. So it goes and spliced up. together Over again. <laughs> I didn't Unfortunately, the line doesn't. <laughs> I pretty much just drove this car and fixed the kink in the fuel line. Okay, so we got a filter up here, huh? That's one of those good Mr. Gasket ones too. Yeah, right now. Well, I suppose we'll uh, pop that for you and see what we got in there, maybe. Yeah. You know, see if there's any rust falls out or anything. Mm -hmm. It's got disc brakes. That's nice. That is a C6. Should be. Yeah. Well, that's good news. It's hot up here. Filter off, and hopefully a bunch of crap falls out. It's got new fuel pump on it. Oh. Solid rust. That'll do it, man. That'll do oh, it. Good. Yeah, look at that. It's that's oh, nice. yeah, that is black. Yeah, that's... That's good gas. It's clean on the pump side. It's clean I coming out of here. Probably not. And then look at the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of blue. It's not good. Here, yeah, just climb up that okay, post. Okay, now you're going to report that. Someone's going to call Steve Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, get up there. Go find that new gas tank for me. Okay. It's probably in the box that says gas tank. Oh, wait, do you need me to go up there? Yeah, he's got a beat. He did. That was not, this is not as bad. That spins somewhat well. Ugh. That one. Not, not that so much. Well, 
It's okay. They just need more in. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah, yep. for sure. They're not. I won't oil that too much. For yeah, just... let's leave that alone. So we're just gonna change the oil on this and ignore all of the problems it clearly has. Kevin ran to town to go get some fuel filters. Oh, I miss and dumping all over it. <laughs> Be scrambling to just leave. <laughs> just leave yeah, man. Mess. Thanks. It's pretty black. Huh. Yes. No. No, it smells like oil. It's no. not thick either. Pretty thin. It's pretty thin. Could be the marvel at work. You're gonna get it. God, it's hot as hell. <laughs> Is it turning? Yes. Ugh. Just blow on your hands for a little um, bit. <laughs> no, no, I got it. What? I brought gloves. You too. Wow, holy crap. What? Okay. <laughs> there is an intelligent one of us out of this group. Yeah, and it's the child. <laughs> wow, this changes yeah. my life. <laughs> I, like, see, I see things so differently now. I've worked on a car on a lift about three times in my life. Why are his tools organized? I don't know. I was really confused whenever I opened up the drawer and there were things where they were supposed to be. I can't even find where it's supposed to go because it's organized. I don't know where my tools go. I know where they were last. Hand tight. Hand no. tight. I no wrenches. Put a, I always put a wrench on it. Crank it down. Half turn. How do we put oil in the car? Lower it down. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm guessing I can figure out how to lower it down. Well, uh, well, ah. Cody tries to figure out how to work the lift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead. You did it! Hey! Anyway, while well, he does that, I'm gonna mix in. Kevin had some of this spare Rotella around. And we're gonna put the goo in here first and pre install the goo, you see? Mm -hmm. Then we'll shake it up. That way the goo is ready to go. Wow. It's always weird working at somebody else's shop. Yeah. Especially one that's significantly better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> you just, I claim this for me. You know what? This is mine now. Three quarts. So we'll need two more quarts of something else Kevin has and we'll just steal it from him. Because yeah. that's what I do. Well, this is our shop now. It's this is good. very oh. gooey for some reason. Check my stick. Mm, stick. Oh my gosh. Is in the safe it's zone. It's in the safe the zone. stick is in the safe zone. Everybody stand down. All right, what are you doing, JD? Clean it. Because we don't really have anything else to do that I'm aware of. We can put the new wiper blades on. If you find anything cool, let me know. And, uh, you know, don't eat too much of the rat poison. Yeah, I won't. Dude, that's like YouTube guy stickers. Wait, really? Whoa. Dude. Did you know he owned this car at one time? What? A celebrity owned this car? We have reached the point of no return here. I have screwed this up very badly. No, you just look through the one part that's <laughs> attached to the it. way. No. Well, I don't know. I can rebuild a motor, but this is complicated. Now how do you do this? You have discovered the way, which is force it. Force it off. Okay, so the parts run guy is here, um, but no one else is. <laughs> I just got back from O'Reilly's and I've got uh, trans fluid, a blinker relay, and fuel filters. And there's nobody here. So I guess I'm gonna hijack this camera and go like take a video of me pooping or something. Actually, I suppose I could be a productive member of society and put this new 3 8 fuel filter in while they're getting some chicken. Well, Kevin tossed a new fuel filter on it while we were busy doing nothing. Yeah, so let's fire it up, make sure it still runs anyway. No, I don't believe I'll be participating. Time will tell. Uh, I might get suckered into it. I don't know. I deem it good enough. Yeah, you can. 
an idol, can you? Well, we're heading out from uh, Phoenix's house. He did some three-wheeler stuff there. That was kind of fun. I don't know how to ride anything. I'm not good at small engines. Uh, got the Torino just purring along for me. Look at that sunset. I'm really just thrilled to have this car. Now, hopefully it makes it home. We got four hours ahead of us. This is a car, ladies and gentlemen. This is a real automobile. Just a cruiser. almost surreal. I'm not even sure how to describe it. You know how sometimes you just wait for something and it, and it sometimes it's just exactly how you imagined it would be. And that's what this is right now. Anyway, we've got about 240 miles left, so let's hope the old Torino's got it. top her off with some fuel. We don't want to run that tank too low and suck up a bunch more crap out of there. It's still running fine. I'd like to keep it All that right. way. Well, it's still here. Basically, you know, anytime you're trying to run off of some old car like this, you just want to kind of give everything a once-over. Make sure the belts are tight, all that nonsense. I'm glad we got the cranberry juice bottle. You know, that's key. Uh, well, when you get parked. Yeah, just have a slip of that. That's in the safe range. We might not have ever had it quite right. I don't think we ever checked it after it started. No, we didn't. But it doesn't smell hot. It doesn't seem hot. No, it's running smooth as we I wish it had cruise control. Filled her up. It's getting about 13 miles a gallon, which is not bad considering all the romping I've been doing. So we'll drive a little more normal uh, this time around. This car was built and assembled and put together by strong men and women. They just don't build anything even close to this anymore. Like, yeah, it's not the fastest thing in the world. But this is the last of the cool cars, 1973. I mean, that's it. I'm sorry. You can keep your Smokey and the Band of Trans Ams and stuff like that. Because that's a cool car, but it's not a muscle car. You know what I mean? Like, this is a muscle car. Because it's a, it's just a bulky, you know, kind of mid-sized car, but it's just got attitude out the ass, you know, and it's a intermediate sedan, which makes it a, a muscle car, not a pony car like a fire. I mean, you got the tack, you got the full instrumentation, I mean, you got the, you know, the dash, even the dash looks muscular and like race car like. Uh, you know, you look in the mirrors in the back and you just got like big hips of the car, like, yeah. you know, it's, it's just gonna, it just looks like it's gonna kick your ass, and that is what makes a muscle car cool. This is the last of them right here. All right, youngins, it's time for a lesson. This has a five-digit odometer. And she's about to roll over all zeros. And I'm going to start my Torino adventure with a brand new 1973 Grand Torino Sport, baby. Everybody's waiting in anticipation. Have you ever seen this happen on a YouTube channel? I bet not. Especially you youngins. You probably don't even know what I'm talking about. Nine, 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 nine. Should click all zeros. This is dangerous. Oh, oh, woo! Brand new car.
stage has repaired itself. The car is healing as we speak. It's fixing itself. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's happening. Yeah, that's what's going on for sure. She keeps trucking. Everything looks all right. Temp's good. Oil pressure is, well, it's there and it's a Ford, so that's pretty much all you get. A little under two hours to go. Yeah. All right, so I think I got the radio figured out. You see, it's not that it doesn't work. What we're doing is actually picking up illegal radio channels, right? I think it's like a KGB listening post, right? Uh -huh. That's definitely what this is. Come on, we gotta get some Ru we gotta get some Russian intel out of this. It's the Russian death march. Now she smells a little warm. The place it was, right on the S of safe. Perfect. Just leave it alone. Yeah. Grab some snacks and hit our last leg here. We'll be on pretty shortly. Hard to beat that. All right. It, it uh, smokes pretty bad when he started up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go. Yep. Let's get home. Another two hours or something? Nah, a little less. Okay. Not that bad. Well, we're about an hour out. It's freaking beautiful down here. It's like 70 degrees. We got the windows down, letting all the rat stench out, you know. Because uh, it stinks pretty bad in here, actually. Uh, but I think I think we might have cooked Fievel. I think Fievel's dead. Uh, and his whole family. I think we cooked them somewhere in the car and they're kind of, woo, you know. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and uh, wash her up, huh? Okay, how about the leak test, huh? Huh? Wow. Wow. Holy cow. The cool. panel's dry. What? That's a first. These aren't even, these are frameless windows. Weather seals are freaking good in this thing. Oh. What? That's crazy. Well, we made it home just in time. So JD can go to Grandma and Grandpa's to go to school in the morning and so that I can go to work before he goes to school in the morning. We made it back at nine o'clock, just in the nick of time. But she served us faithfully, got us here. Pretty damn impressive, actually. Sir, Kevin really never took it on any trips. He just kind of putzed it around town and stuff, you know. That was the first time that had been out on a long trip. And she did damn good. Well, anyway. I slept through every single one of my alarms to go to work. So let's work on the car today instead. I put the factory air cleaner housing back on. I just, you know, this just looks correct because, well, it is. But I did notice one thing. See that ding right there? That carb stud's too tall. It's been whacking the bottom of the hood. And uh, that's probably some of our, you know, squeaky clattery stuffy stuff like that. So let's uh, fix that problem. And problem solved. We're going to try to put a hood scoop on this. That's really the most pressing matter. I do that. I'm going to black out the middle of this hood and find some way to remove the spray can primer off of it. Some soapy water and seal wool did it, but I won't have arms if I if I do it that way. So right in the middle of this hole? Right in the middle. All right, time to butcher it. Sorry, Kevin. That is crooked or Yes, something. that's wobbly. Okay. Point and overturn. There we go. Man, I'd have to trim that out. Yeah, we'll cut that out. Okay, where's the, is the second one touching the dot? It's all right on the outside edge. So we need to draw on the inside of that dot. This one's like literally right on it. Okay. All these are pretty kind of close. Look at that. It's like the exact same color. <laughs> Well, maybe we do dust the hood with it. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, just get this color. Tell them you need a can of this. You just dust the edge of the thinner top. This is yeah. good for a base. It's not there for a base. But, uh, you can get them halfway 
line up because I'm sure we'll have to warble some of them. Warble now. this one out just a bit towards the corner. Yeah. Yep, and also look at this. It's got glass around the base. Oh, shit. All right, so we need to grind that off. We're ready for a hit scoop, but we're going to have some black under it. No need to be perfect right now, just trying to make sure it's black underneath here. In the wind. Job of this on each one of these. A little caulk around them. Then we put the washer nope. on, it'll keep it from leaking. And now the nuts will be permanently attached. Flat fender washer. Splooge out around it. Four, five, six out of nine. That's not bad. That's sixty-six percent of them. I can't get that one. Oh, we can if we cut it with a hole. So yeah. Why is this side got a hole? Yeah, no, that one's got a hole. Just perfect for it. And this one doesn't. All right, scoop is attached. Everything's all snotted up. We used a hole saw to cut a hole back there to get that back bolt, and it kind of matches the original one on the other side. I'm gonna cut that center stud off a little just so it's not hanging out there but you know it's got a little gap to it but guess what they all did it's a factory hood scoop that's just how they are once we get it all black you'll never see any of it for now i just want kind of nice driver we got a little pinhole leak in this air hose line for that right air shock so let's go ahead and get that take care of and see if we can't get a little air in the shocks give a little attitude with air shocks you got this little schrader valve here and uh, I'm going to move it to where you don't got to be under the car to do it. I'll just put it right here. Right there. Ah, yeah. Too much? Oh, I'm leaking. Yeah, this bag's blown out. <laughs> Shock on the left side's leaking. Oh, God. All right, I'll get online right now and buy a set of air shocks. Uh-huh. Next up, let's go try to put some new uh, shoes on this baby. That works a lot better. Yeah. Much better. Well, that looks pretty cool. But let's go to uh, the hardware store, get some paint so we can paint that hood. Yeah, I think we'll be good with this thing. Well, we still gotta clean all the rat poop out. So, driving home, I noticed that it shakes real bad now. And uh, here's why. Those idiots didn't tighten the lug nuts on this wheel. Their hand started. What the hell, man? I mean, is our society to the point that younger people, like me, can't figure out how to tighten a f***ing wheel down? Now, now that that ordeal's settled, what we're going to do next is run a DA over the hood. But we're just going to go inside of the body lines right here. Then we'll black out the middle of the hood. Then we'll come back and try to work the edges with some SOS pads and get that blue to come back around. Then while we're waiting on paint to dry up here, we can try to work on that deck lid too. Now we're not trying to get real extreme here, we just want to rough it up a little so some spray paint will stick to it. Just daily driver for now, right? We're not going full resto. Well, it occurred to me that before I spray that, I should try to get all the color I want out of this side here. Well, the sides of the hood, right? So I can have a nice clean tape line. So we're going to hope that the SOS pads can get the job done. If not, well, we can try wet sanding or rough it up with these SOS pads. You know, from the Dollar Tree, so they're scrub buddies. That's going to take a while. Well, doing it that way is going to take the rest of my life. Let's move on to trying some wet sanding. I've got some 400 grit here, which is maybe a little bit aggressive. That works a lot better. However, when you wet sand, you've got that risk of cutting through what you want to save, right? You kind of got to be careful, and you don't want to leave mar scratch marks in it either. Who knew that the Scotch Brite is actually the best solution here? It combines the best of both worlds, apparently. Well, I hate the term patina, but that did bring out the patina pretty good. I'm definitely more of a, I like my cars to, you know, look good, 
kind of guy, but this will work for now. So I got one more side to do, I'm gonna knock that out, and then maybe we'll get to spraying. The uh, patina is resurrected a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and tape that off. And then we'll get to spray in this, and then we'll go work on the deck lid. I imagine you all know by now that if I intended for this to be any kind of long-term paint job, I would at least be using tractor paint or something of the sort. I really plan on this being long-term, but, you know, just enough to keep it cool, you know, while, while we can drive it around and enjoy the car for a while. I'm going to try to lay it right below the body line. I'm not good at this. I should have had Dad do it. I've never been very good at wearing stripes. It's not as good as Dad could do, but it's probably about as good as I can do. Now I just have to do it twice. That's the hard part. So the next step is to keep all the spray paint off of the car. So we'll put some masking paper down. Then we will let the spray bomb magic begin. Well, I deemed that good enough. So one final step here is to hit it with a little prep sol or wax and grease remover. Give our spray paint its best shot at sticking. I got good spray paint too. Good Rust-Oleum paint and primer. I don't think you can get any better spray paint. The only downside to spray paint is that it is self-catalyzing. With any self-catalyzing paint or coating at all, uh, you lose a lot of UV resistance that way without a separate hardener. And that's honestly the only reason why I would never use spray paint in bulk on anything. You know, you see people paint cars with turbo cans and stuff like that. It's just not going to last, guys. It looks okay in a video, and that's why they do it. It's really not a solution. Not whenever I could paint something with tractor paint, have it look like JD's car. Damn good for less money, actually. A little bit more work, but less money. The key to this is prep. Prep is everything. And you can't do something wrong correctly until you know how to do it right. Alright, so we're just going to use some semi-gloss, rust-oleum, paint and primer in one stuff. I've had really good luck with this. I've used it for years. No problems. We're just going to put a light dusting on it, let it set, and put a lot of thin layers on it to get the best result out of the spray paint that we can. This stuff covers so good. Something for the next layer of paint to stick to. And that same rule there applies to uh, everything paint, actually, even if you're painting a car correctly. Pretty potent stuff. <laughs> getting, end up getting black overspray all over my Le Mans. One second! Sometimes using a circular motion when you're spraying spray paint will keep you from getting stripes in it. Easy to do because you've got such a small nozzle. <laughs> Get it, small nozzle. Well, this might be hopeless, but let's see if we can do something similar on the deck lid here, which, you know, is going to be a little more labor intensive than those little spots on the hood, but. Probably worth the effort. I've just got some masking paper and some tape up on the trim there just so I could hopefully avoid scratching anything valuable. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> not bad, not bad. We got our work cut out for us. That looks about a gazillion times better. Now to wipe off all this crud, I'll just hit it with some basic detailer here. For now, this will work. It's not perfect, but it sure beats the hell out of gray primer. I don't know what they were thinking doing that. They didn't even sand it. Hell, it's still shiny under here. At least I can not be embarrassed to drive this thing around. I got standards, all right? Low standards, but standards. No, this isn't dry yet, so uh, let's go ahead and screw it up. Now 
Now this is supposed to be semi-gloss black, and it's very gloss, but it is what it is, I guess. I don't hate it. I was just hoping for something that's a little more dull, you know what I mean? <laughs> Freaking tape bled through. Dang it. Well, well, it adds to the patina. Yeah, of course, the expensive 3M tape I have bleeds through, but the Dollar Tree masking tape works marvelous. Because you know, that's pretty much just how my life goes. Hopefully this paint dies out a little as it sets up. It's definitely not semi-gloss. In fact, it's very gloss. Like, spray paint is never that good. I hope it dies. I don't know. I mean, I don't hate it. It's just... It doesn't fit, and I was trying to get something flat. Other than that, everything else is cleaned up pretty good. I think we move on to the interior now. We're running out of daylight. I'm sorry, Kevin, but I gotta get rid of the Trailer Park Boys fan club sticker in the back window of this thing. I mean, I get it. You know, you might forget what kind of car you're driving, but it's comfy in here. Yeah. All right, he's cleaning the outside. I'll clean the inside. Then, look. Look, it's just, that's a lot better. Okay, yeah, you're gonna vacuum? Yep. Okay, I will finish cleaning off the back window, which looks a gazillion times better. You vacuum and then we'll just wipe everything out. And okay. This are, I mean, it's not like super dirty or yeah, anything. Yeah, it's really not. I say just wipe that down yeah. with something. Yeah, ready to give everything a wipe down? Yep. With some, uh, Fancy Dollar Tree spray stuff. Sure. There you go. Clean in here now. Package tray nice and clean. But it's time for the most important part. How about with the uh, Midnight Cool air freshener, you know? So that way it's you're cool at midnight. Cover up the wrapped piece. <clears throat> we'll just stick that in here. And, uh,. Rat smell will be, will be gone. I actually found freaking windshield washer fluid at Dollar Tree for a dollar twenty-five for a whole gallon. I'm sure it's genuine blue water. I thought I heard the pump trying to work in this thing. I guess I should check and see if it's pouring on the ground. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Usually these are frozen. Oop. See if it works. Be cool if it worked, wouldn't it? Nope. Okay, well, that was a waste of time. Anyway, guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Pole Bar Garage. I think we got a lot done here. One, crossed a whole ass car off my bucket list. Really spruced it up, and it just looks like a completely different automobile now. I'm just still thrilled to my toes about this thing. But, uh, I don't know, we got some more work to do to it. I got some brake parts coming and stuff like that. I got seat covers coming too. I bought those. If you want to see more of the 1973 Gran Torino Sport, just let me know down in the comments. Lots of comments. And remember, hit the like and the subscribe button. Or else. All right, you want to drive it? Yeah. All right. Get the seat forward. Uh, yeah. It's in the front. All right. Put off the brake. Don't drive two footed. Steering? Yeah. Pretty good. Better than my car. Mine yeah. doesn't even have power steering. Even just resting your foot on it will eat those brakes up quick. That's why you use one foot to drive. Okay. So put your left foot, put it on the floor. And then when you want to stop, pick just, up your yeah. right foot and hit the brakes. Try, so it. Not doing Try both. it right now. Yeah, that works. That's 
how you do it. That's how you don't wear out your brake pads. You like it? Uh, yeah. Good. A little easier in your car. Okay in here. Yeah. 